Hello, welcome back, welcome back. It's all about game master preparation today, making magic items, and we're going to actually make some magic items today. We've been doing a lot of magic item tool building, but I decided today I would let you build some tools, make some tools. I will make some tools, and I will share one of my little tricks that I do <laughs> when it comes to doing anything regarding a magic item, which... I had forgotten that I do, and so it's probably important that I put it in, in here, so I'm, I'll do it. Okay, put up a poll, feel free to take part in that poll, and uh, we're going to get straight into this. Make sure you have some food, some drink, make sure you're comfortable. Now I have a slideshow to start with. I'll go through my slideshow. It has been updated, uh, so there's a little bit of additional information, and then on top of that, straight after the slideshow, I will be going into actually making some magic items with you. Anyway, let's get started, shall we? All right, here we go. Hi, welcome to How to RPG. My name is Fred Weller, and today I want to talk about role playing games. And How to RPG is all about tabletop role playing games. And today it's all about game master preparation. This is a work day, this is lesson five. Creating, making, home brewing, customizing magic items for your game. How does that look? How do we do it? That's what you're here for. I'm going to explain it. Okay. So the overview for today, what we're going to cover is how to create magic items. Creating balanced magic items, because that's always a question I get. Magic item inspiration, where you get your ideas from. The process of making a magic item and of course some miscellaneous recommendations because miscellaneous recommendations are things that I think are important that you need to remember. Anyway, so the objectives is to explain how to create a magic item for your tabletop role playing game, but also today demonstrate that process. So we're actually going to make some magic items. We're not gonna to make tools to make magic items. We're going to make some magic items. And I want you to practice. <clears throat> so I'm gonna give you some tasks and you're going to use the live chat to give me information and we will form a new magic item. This gives you an opportunity to practice in chat and get feedback <clears throat> and uh, and just sort of make it, make it your own. Okay? So how do you create magic items? First question. Often the creation of a homebrew or customized magic item will result in a string of problems for a game master. It just always seems to be the case. It doesn't matter who it is, it's always going to happen to somebody, and uh, nobody's going to get left out of this. You know, it's a, it's a rite of passage. Players will generally want more powerful and more options for their magic items. Fundamental to how players operate generally, okay? Anything they find in the game, anything they can buy in the game, this will definitely affect the Game Master's preparation process, particularly the development of challenge. Now, whether that's combat challenge or challenging them in a different way, okay, because there might be exploration challenge or something else, problem solving, puzzle solving, magic items can sort of derail that, just like all magic and spells can. Now, magic items can drive the tabletop role-playing game campaign for a game master. It makes it, a, look, a magic item that is a main feature, the MacGuffin, okay, that thing can actually drive the whole campaign and make it work quite well. So they're, they're not bad things. Magic items can be very, very good for your game. They're not intrinsically bad in any way. What I would suggest to you is you want to start small, incorporate your homebrew magic items slowly, do not include too many all at once, and this will reduce the number of issues and problems that will occur for you. You will not be able to avoid completely problems with your magic items with your players. Because players, like there's four or five brains working against your one brain. And the reality is that somebody eventually will figure out some way of using a magic item in a way that you did not consider. It is going to happen. So you can't avoid it completely, but you can reduce that problem. Okay, so that's the basic starting point that I usually begin with. The next thing is, I always get this question, and that is, how do you create balanced magic items? There must be a way. There has to be a formula. Unfortunately, not really. <laughs> it's not practical to create a magic item that is balanced for any tabletop role-playing game. 
In the game of Dungeons and Dragons 5e, character mathematics and abilities don't need magic items. Uh, a player character in Dun Dungeons and Dragons 5e is built so it can be successful without the need of a magic item. So it's not intrinsically built in. <clears throat> Another factor to consider is Dungeons and Dragons 3.5, 4e, Pathfinder First Ed Edition, they do require the characters to have magic items to keep up with the monster mathematics of the game. So it's a little bit different. There's another factor to consider as well. And that by and by its very definition, the inclusion of magic items is designed and intended to break the game in some way. Just like magic is designed to break the game in some way. So magic items will always do this. It doesn't matter what version of D&D, Pathfinder, or some other role-playing game, it was always designed to break the game. As long as you understand this, that's a good thing. Next, now the power of a magic item. How do we know which one is the greatest powered magic item, which is the lowest powered magic item? <clears throat> now you might be able to just look at something that says a ranking, it might have a ranking system in place, but the easiest way to understand how magic items work and what is considered the most powerful and what is the least powerful is this. <coughs> Pardon me. <coughs> My drink of water might help. Oh, God. Okay, sorry about that. Um, the greatest powered magic item is mobility. The ability to fly, walk or across water, to teleport, to move more quickly. Mobility is always the greatest power that a magic item can have. Now that might not make any sense to you right now, but trust me, once you start playing at higher level, it becomes very, very clear that mobility is far more valuable. The next one is something that grants extra magic power. What that means is it gives you something additional that you didn't have before. Whether that's more spells, or it gives you a stronger spell, or increases the power of your spell, or the magic that you're using, that's what we're covering. The next thing underneath that would be specific magical effects. <clears throat> such as a wand of fireball or magic missile. These things are very specific, okay? They are probably sitting under that. The next one is actually martial combat. Anything that's got a, a magic item that's martial combat, that's weapons and armor, braces, helmets, things like that, they come up underneath there. Now you might be thinking, that's strange. Why are you saying that? I'll explain. And then lastly, the least powerful out of all the magic items is the miscellaneous utility magic item these things don't do any of the other things they are just sort of they fill in the little gaps they can also be in the right hands very very strong but generally they are the least powerful of everything <clears throat> now i've just said that martial combat things like magic weapons and armor aren't really that powerful as a magic item Yet I'm about to contradict myself in a, in, a, in a way, but not quite completely. Magic weapons, magic armor, and combat foes, and anything that's combat focused as a magic item, will generally generate the most issues for you. Now that's not because they are the most powerful of the magic items that you can create, but it's because they are often the first thing that people make, which then suggests that they are the most powerful, but they are not. They're just the most prevalent, they're usually the first things people make. If you make a magic item, often people make magic weapons and then magic armor, <clears throat> magic wands, things like that. So this isn't really a, a wise starting point for a game master. If you're going to start off making magic weapons, armor, and combat-focused items for a game master is not a good place to start. Yet you're going to get a lot of pressure from your players to make that sort of thing. It's not up to them. <laughs> Make it clear, it's not up to them. You have to deal with this, not them, okay? If they want to do it that way, go be a game master, um, baby, because, uh, you know, it, it gets complicated. Anyway, the uh, now the utility magic item is the best place to start. It is the least powerful of everything. It is the best thing to create for a player character, as they have the least effect on the game and usually don't affect combat encounter design. If you're designing a combat or a battle or a fight, 
they often don't come into play at all. They're usually used outside of combat, so you don't have to worry quite so much about the combat aspect. You may have to concern yourself with other things, like exploration and things like puzzle solving and so forth, but utility is a good place to start. The next thing is common magic items with very small magical effects tend to be the lowest power level for anything. So that's a good point to start as well. Make it common, make it simple, make it low powered, make it utility. Okay, now the power of a magic item can be adjusted over time and it's much easier to start with low, scarce, low scarcity okay, or rarity or low powered magic items and this avoids having a seriously overpowered magic item in your game that maybe undermines your campaign or creates problems you're not really ready to deal with. So these are a good reason to start small and slow and really low powered stuff. It is easier for a player to accept an increased power in a magic item if you need to make adjustments to a magic item over time, once it's introduced to your campaign, then to decrease the power of a magic item. Starting with a magic item that is too powerful and finding out later on that you shouldn't have included it and then having to depower it, players don't like that. Now, you still might have to do it because just because the players don't like that doesn't mean that they get to do it everything the way they want. That's just not the case. But it is much easier to start low and increase the power of something very slowly and get, a, get an idea of what's going on with that magic item rather than starting at a much higher level. It's the easiest way to deal with most things. And I'm going to giving you an example of this today. And today I'm going to give you an example of a magic item. Just bear with me. We'll get there. Okay, next. Inspiration for your magic items. Where do you get your inspiration from? Where can you draw it from? I always suggest to people that the Harry Potter the Harry Potter movies are really good. They've got lots of little magical trinkets and items in there that you can sort of port over to your game. They have minuscule effects on them. Um, they kind of like, they are very utility and function. Even the Harry Potter books, if you prefer reading, go, go do that by all means. They have great examples of magic items that do all sorts of fun assorted things. Novels from fantasy, science fiction that include magic items, by all means grab that stuff. Historical magic items from mythology and legend. You'll find that most magical items from, his, um, from mythology and legend are very powerful. So you have to be careful. You might have to depower a few of those things to start off with. Then you have computer games, video games. They have lots of magic item properties and magic items that you can port over. And then I would also recommend a, an approach to start off with duplicating some of the concepts that are in Xanathar's Guide to Everything by the, um, the Wizards of the Coast team. It has common, simple, magical effects for, which you can, in many cases, port over to any tabletop role-playing game. It's a good source of how to go about making something very, very basic. Um, Xanathar's Guide to Everything. I think there's about five pages worth of magic items that are just very, very simple effects. It's a good place to start. Next, Antiques. Heirlooms, even trinkets that aren't magical can have a magical property that you assign to them. I, I think that the, the trinkets in the player's handbook for D&D 5e, and in, in fact, you can find whole tables of trinkets for free online in many, many places on the web. Uh, they can be, con, you know, they can actually be turned into a magic item because, uh, you know, trinkets usually don't start off as being magical, but they could be magical. And that gives you a little effect. Older versions of Dungeons and Dragons and other tabletop role-playing games have many magic items that you can use as inspiration for your creations. Or you may be even just going to copy it completely. I don't know. It's up to you. The process of making a magic item. What does that look like? Well, first off, give your magic item an interesting and obvious name to tell part of the story of the object or indicate the function of your magic item. The name of your magic item is actually very, very important. Without the name, you've kind of lost a lot of players. Now, they of course will need to take notes on what the magic item does, but the name tells a lot. So it's important to select a name that's going to work for that magic item. Create a magical effect that has a benefit or a detrimental effect. Detrim detrimental effect. 
It doesn't have to be beneficial. It might have a negative effect. It might be cursed. Include that as part of your magical effect for your magic item. You can include magic items over time, so they don't have to all come in all at once. You can add things over time as the player uses that, that character uh, and, and, and mucks around with that magic item. They might be able to pull up different abilities from it. Now, special magical weapon abilities, you're going to find a whole bunch of these sorts of things listed in the Game Mastery Guide for Pathfinder First Year Edition. I do have a table myself that has many different magic item special abilities. You can find that on Patreon. Things like minor and major beneficial properties can be found on the DMG. You can find uh, minor and major detrimental and beneficial in the DMG as well. And then quirks and properties, things that sort of make it sort of stand out. What is the history of your magic item? What was the magic item intended for? And I would suggest that having some idea of how to build your history uh, is going to be very useful to you. You can find plenty of tables out there on the web that will um, do exactly what you want in terms of what's the history of my magic item. Who built it and why? I tend to have magic items built and made by liches because liches have way more time than everybody else. So a lot of magic items tend to have a very nasty effect somewhere along the line. It's got a benefit, but there's something a bit um, twisted as well. You don't have to always do that. That's just me. Uh, determining the power level of your magic item. How powerful? Is it low level power? Is it high level power? Is it mid range? How rare is it? How often can you find it? So select the, the appropriate scarcity or rarity for your magic item to help define the power because they do sort of connect. If it's scarce, it probably means it's very powerful. If it's very common, it's probably not very powerful. Now, also, a bond. Some sort of bond or attunement to that magic item helps stop player characters stacking too many powerful magical effects or too much powerful stuff all at once onto their one character. That's why we have bonding and attunement to magic items. Uh, now, magic bonds and attunements are best assigned to a magic item that has a permanent effect that doesn't run out of magical effect. So in other words, it's always magical, it doesn't have charges, it's not a single use item, things like that. There's not much point assigning um, attunement or a bonding process to a magic potion that you drink once and then throw it away. Does the magic item have charges? So... Do those charges recharge when you dip it into a magical pool? Does it recharge at dawn? Does it recharge after a couple of days? Um, you know, do you have to go to a local wizard, recharge it? So there's only so many uses of it, and then after that, it doesn't work anymore. Can you recharge it at all? Does it have charges, but it doesn't recharge? So you get to use it five times, and then it's useless to you. Does it have a permanent effect that's always active? Or is it a consumable single-use item, like a potion, a scroll, um, an elixir, uh, you know, something like that. Now, I'm going to mention this because I know a lot of people do use it, and there's a place for it. Obviously, not a place in publishing, but artificial intelligence, chat GPT. It's quick and easy for making magic items. Will it make really good magic items? No. Will it get you started? Yes. If you're stuck and your mind is blank and you just don't know what to do, yes, it can certainly help, particularly if you don't have other game masters or people to bounce ideas off. This is certainly a, a starting point if you need to, to use it. Okay, when I do this, I always like to give some miscellaneous recommendations, so here are my recommendations to you. Expect to make mistakes with your magic item creation. When you make a magic item, you will make a mistake. Everybody else has, why should you be excluded from that process? What is a mistake? It's a mistake that you acknowledge and believe is a mistake. It is not a mistake because somebody else thinks it's a mistake. Okay? Mistakes, you can have a very powerful magic item in a campaign, in your game, and it not be a mistake. And you can have a very low-powered magic item, and it be a mistake. It wasn't strong enough. It really comes down to you and your group. Okay? And when it's a mistake, you as the game master, dungeon master, are the one who's acknowledging it was a mistake. Because depending on your skill and what you do in the game as a game master, you may be able to deal with most of the problems that crop up. Or maybe you don't. So it's only a mistake if you think it's a mistake. 
Next. It is fine to take existing magic items and reskin that item in some way. So you haven't done any fundamental work other than rename the item something else. But essentially it has the same function as an existing magic item that exists in your game. Or the tabletop role playing supplements that you buy. There is no mathematical formula to making a magic item, okay? When you're going and creating, making, building, home brewing, customizing magic items, there's no mathematical formula that will avoid players finding a way to exploit them because players have more brain power than you because there's more than one brain. They will figure out how to use it in a way that you were not expecting. So do not expect there to be a mathematical formula that guarantees everything, because there isn't. It is an art. It is based off what you can deal with as a game master. Not all game masters see everything as a problem, okay, or a mistake. Some just see it as, fine, that's what happens. And some people will find it more difficult, because it will have a, an, a significant effect and require them to do things that they weren't expecting that they would need to do. So, yeah, just remember that. No mathematical formula. Anyway, I'm hoping this was useful to you, and if it was, fantastic. Uh, thank you for watching and listening. I want to thank my patrons who support me on Patreon so that I can keep running this program, uh, talking and explaining how to make magic items. And, of course, we'll be doing some magic item creation in a few minutes. Uh, I want to thank um, all of you for your time, and hey, till next time, keep rolling those 20s. Oh, okay, right, I think I got that, we got that done, we're done, there we go, that's it, sweet, okay, so today it is, um, it's one of those, it's a work day, and I have um, been building a lot of magic, well, not a lot, but I've been building magic item tool building stuff with you uh, for the past couple of couple of times I've run this so we did um, 100 magic item properties uh, which I will show you very shortly we've done things like uh, negative you know uh, negative traits for a magic item we didn't complete that one and that's fine I, I will get to finishing it off but I, I wanted to at least sort of discuss it a little bit um, let's see if I can my chat has been moved because there's an ad playing at the top. Okay, all right, YouTube, you do what you're going to do, and I'll do what I'll do. I don't apparently have control over that. Okay, so, uh, PB, great video, thank you. You're welcome, PB. I'm, I'm glad you, you liked it. Uh, Pale Rider, I'm here, but my internet is acting weird. Uh, might drop out. That's fine, Pale, Pale Rider, I understand. I loved Intelligent Sword in Beck Me D&D, AD and d all right, okay, swords. Intelligent swords cause lots of problems. Um, why patch a 360 site negative 2 to dex for the first 7 days to adjust to this new reality? I don't know what we're talking about here. Shiner81, hello, how are you? Pendant of the spell book. Open the pendant, dis displays a holographic image of your spell book. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> I don't know what to say about that. Um, I'm going to just get my phone organized because, and I'm going to get rid of my hat. That means I'm, I'm, I'm getting ready to work, okay? Ugly weirdo, Michael, hello Michael, how are you doing? Um, Michael Freku, I believe it is, Michael Freku. So, I thought what I would do is I would make one magic item. I'm going to take your ideas by all means and maybe make some adjustments in, the, um, in, in, a, in a Google Doc, which I'm going to share with you in a second. But I also thought what I would do is I get this question a lot. How do I make a magic item so it's not too underpowered and not too powerful? How do I get it right in that sweet spot? And I have always, as you know, said start low, start very, very simple. But a lot of people want to make magic items, and magic items that are swords, okay, and armor and so forth, are the, probably the first place that people want to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I make a magic sword when I'm starting off. 
and um, I thought that would be useful to you. I will actually write it up because I've never actually done that. This is where I'll do it today, okay? Okay. Uh, let me just grab your your little idea here. And I need to just drop this over here. Uh, where is this? No, 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 no. Put it in the right place, people. Um, uh, pardon me. Paste. We'll come back to that. Okay, let me at least show you what we have in terms of some of the things that we've been working on. And then I'll give you sort of a taste of how it works and how it is, and then we'll go from there. Okay, so here's our first screen. This screen, you're wondering, what the heck is this? This is actually 100 Magic Item Properties. We made this a while back, and uh, it's on Patreon. Uh, it's a very simple document. It's just 100 different things. Now, you'll notice that all of it is system agnostic. There's nothing in here that's 5E, 4E, 3.5, Pathfinder, nothing like that. It is always designed as giving you the basic gist of what the magic item is trying to do. And it covers lots of different things. It's all alphabetical. There's tag names to it. And certainly we could use this as a way of constructing magic items. And that's why we built it. I, I made it in the first place. For those of you who would struggle with that, that, that whole process and needed a little bit of help. So this exists. Now we were working on this one. Now this is mostly done, but not quite. This is because the first one was positive magic item effects, okay? This is negative magic traits. So 100 magic traits that are negative in some way. Uh, they're not curses, they're just negative. They don't have a positive outcome. They usually have a negative outcome in some way. Now we got most of the way through this. It's got all sorts of crazy stuff in here, okay? Uh, this is not available to anybody right now because it's not finished. And why am I not working on it today? The reason I'm not working on it today is because for a couple of months now, you know, almost over over six months, maybe even eight months, we haven't really made any magic items. And so I thought, well, the idea now is today is the day that we start doing that, right? And, um, and then I can come back to this and deal with this. So this is still to be finished off. There's still about 20 that need to be done. Okay. Okay, so let's uh, let's put this aside. And uh, now the the document that I really am looking at here is this document. Now we had a bunch of things that people made up, like a mini parachute, but we never wrote up the actual magic item. Um, a pen sword, not magical. Uh, so it basically starts as a pen and it turns into a sword. It's a very simple thing. It's 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 Percy Jackson. For those of you who are wondering, it's it's Percy Jackson. Now. There's no reason why it isn't, I and mean, the pen itself, pen sword, uh, we can still make it a magic sword, but maybe not quite in the way you're expecting. The umbrella of descent, it's Mary Poppins' umbrella, basically. Um, the auto writing quill, uh, so basically you can just dictate to it. Um, the suitcase of returning, uh, like there's lots of different things here. The everlasting flower, flower, the flower that never dies, it's always, it's always there. The golden snitch, the golden snitch is from Harry Potter. Hermione's, Hermione's uh, utility handbag. It's basically a, hand, a haversack, really, isn't it? A landscape painting that shows desired weather. So you want to forecast the weather, you have a, a painting that does that for you. Shoes of Caltrop. Um, so we'll, we'll, go, we'll, we'll get into this. So there's a bunch of different ideas here that people had put forward. And I've just dropped in Pale Rider's suggestion here. So what I want to do is I want to show you how I would build a magic sword or a magic weapon without really doing that much with it. Now you're probably wondering, what the hell does that mean, Fred? One of the problems with magic swords, magic weapons, is they tend to have a plus one to them, so that they make it easier to hit the target. Uh, they do a little bit more damage, so maybe, maybe one more point of damage, or you roll a six-sided dice or a four-sided dice or something, and then they have some other magical effect. But you don't know how powerful your magic weapon needs to be, or can be in your campaign for you to deal with, because every game master has a different threshold of what they can handle. And they have different players who will use things in a different way, so you don't know how that's going to work until you try it. And once you try it, taking it away is very difficult. So there is a way of dealing with this. Uh, we did the suitcase of holding, uh, there's a couple of here and things here. The snow stride effigy bear, the 
Pot of Animal Friendship, Snow Globe of Confusion, Boots of Arctic Travel, uh, Magic Mistletoe, Cookie Jar of Misbehaving, Star of Good Vibes, oh, I forgot these, uh, Book of Memories, Deluminator, that's Harry Potter, Flash Powder, you know what that is, Remember Ball, I think that's Harry Potter as well, Spoon of Stirring, that's Harry Potter for sure, and then the Wizard Chess Set, that's Harry Potter, oh, well, that's, I mean, that has existed before Harry Potter, Belt of Useful Items, that's basically Batman's utility belt, and then um, we've got something here that never really got finished, okay, all right, I might just move that up to the top here, and, uh, and then we'll go from there, okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a magic item that is a weapon, since that is where people generally start wanting to, um, to begin, and I'm going to build it in such a way that it will not be overpowered for your game. And I'm not going to show you me building it, I'm going to talk you through it, and then I'm going to show you after. Because I think that is probably going to be more useful and helpful to you than doing it the other way. Okay? Um, I think it's fun how an old, um, an original D&D there was a magic hammer just for the dwarf class. I always thought that was weird. Like, players, DMs had to use that for their setting. Well, I mean, you can change that. No, if you're, if you're a member of Fred's Discord, you have many GMs to bounce your ideas off. Yes, that's tr very true. My my, um, my Discord is full of game masters, okay? So you can definitely uh, get a lot of ideas from there. <laughs> Even an intelligent sword can start at plus one sword until you get to know the user. Well, you can go even lighter than that, okay? Uh, I, made, I, made, uh, I made up a non-weapon armor magic item for my my work game oh did you interesting all right sort of glowing so ability right let's I'll, fred huber is dropping some ideas in here I'll, i'm just going to copy that over so how do you make a magic weapon or sword that is magical because it has to be magical for this to count but in some way is not overpowered so that you can adjust it to see what its effect is. Now most of the time you're probably being told for D&D 5e that about level 5 magic items are the way to go. Yep, start giving them magic items there. Magic weapon, you know, magic sword, magic armor, uh, but at least a magic sword. That's often sort of the thing you'll hear from people. Level 5 is like a huge power spike from level 1 to 4 and then 5. As for other versions of D&D, &D, uh, I don't know that it really matters that much. Honestly, I think it's, uh, I mean, there's definitely a power spike in all all games. There's, there's always going to be a spike somewhere. But what you want to do is you want to think, how can I make the magic item as weak as possible, still magical, but still I have room to move. Now we want to, we don't want to move, have to move the magic item down. We don't want to decrease it. We want to increase it. And power okay and this is what I have found when it comes to magic weapons you always start with something that is magical and pretty much nothing else you're thinking well what's the point of having a, a magic sword if it's just listed as being magical because in most game systems okay in most game systems, you will find that uh, having a magic something is always useful. So how do I do that in such a way? You decouple everything that is that is unnecessary. It is it is probably the easiest way to deal with anything like this. It's like just decouple everything. If you decouple literally everything from it, then you can keep it as as low as a, a common magic item, possibly. Uh, and you won't have to do anything else. That's it. It's as simple as that. 
as long as you think that way and you realize, okay, when I make the magic item, I need to make sure that it is super simple, super easy, and there's room to move upward, okay, but not downward, you've pretty much solved most of your problems. And that's it. It's, a, it's, it's that simple. Uh, in D&D 5e, for example, you will find that most magic items have special effects. Well, you don't even have to include a, mag uh, a special effect to your magic weapon. Your magic sword doesn't need to have any special anything on it. Okay? Give it a name. Smith's. As in Smith's, as in it's next door. Mr. Brown. Yeah? Smith's. Smith's. Magic sword. And once you've done something like that and you've built it, you'll almost immediately discover that you don't need to worry about diddly squat. I know that sounds weird, but it's it's true. Now you just wait. And as you see your players developing and playing their game and how they're using the weapon and where their deficiencies are in their character, you can start filling in the gaps, okay? Once you start filling in the gaps, it becomes a no-brainer. You've, you've solved almost all your problems. All you're, now, all you're doing now with your, your magic weapon that you've given them, your magic sword, is you're using it as a, a way of propping up any mistakes they felt they might have made that you haven't let them readjust. That's it. There's nothing else to it. It's that simple. <laughs> that simple. Now I just want to find a section that has swords. Um, so there's so many different swords here. <laughs> swords of wounding, swords of this, swords of that. But I want something that's super basic. It might be under, is it under weapons? It might be under weapons. Dun, 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 dun. Yes, weapons. So on page uh, 213, if you're de dealing with Dungeons and Dragons 5e, for example, weapons, you, you'll notice it says weapon plus one, plus two, plus three. Don't even make it a plus one, plus two, plus three. Forget about that completely. What you want to do is you want to strip it right back. Okay? Give it as little as you possibly can. So we're going to call it a weapon. We're going to make it common. So this is something that, when it comes to magic items, you could probably find a few of these, okay? Uh, and it just looks like this. This sword was made by a... Uh, what's, the, what's the word? A... Um, Let's just go here. This sword is magical. This sword is magical. And has no other benefits. Now, <laughs> let me show you what it looks like when you do this. You can have a little bit of lore behind this, and I will probably write up a little bit of lore behind it, but this is it. Smith's Magic Sword. It could be Bob's magic sword for all I care. It's a weapon. It's common. Okay. That's it. The sword is magical. It has no other benefits. There's no plus one to attack or damage. There's no other effect other than it's magical. Why is there a benefit to doing this? As I said before, you'll find that most games have creatures and monsters and things that you can attack with a weapon, like a sword, that have to be overcome by magical weapons. That's the benefit, particularly when it comes to something like uh, damage immunity. If, if the, the, the monster is immune to slashing, piercing, bludgeoning uh, damage that isn't magical, and you make it magical, it gets past the fact that you can't do any damage anymore. That's, that's, that's good enough. Like, you know, now, now when you're they're swinging their sword in the front line, Instead of doing no damage whatsoever against a monster that has damage immunity, now they can affect it. As long as the the uh, the monster set up in such a way as it states that 
magic weapons affect it. So you have started at the lowest end of that that scale. Okay, it's the same with magic. Um, you know, damage resistance. If if your monster has damage resistance that can be overcome by a magic weapon, particularly if it does slashing damage and you know piercing damage or bludgeoning damage. In this case, this is going to be slashing damage, right? You can now overcome that damage resistance and get past it, provided it has that built into the stat block. D&D 5e does a lot of this, but even 3.5 and 4e had kind of concepts around this where as long as you had a magic weapon, you could get past some of the, the defenses that it had. That's where you start with a magic weapon, okay? A magic sword, magic weapon, that's where you start. If you start there, you really can't go wrong, <laughs> honestly. I don't think you can go wrong um, because there's 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 nothing to sort of take away. There's nothing left to take away other than the sword is magical. No other benefits. Uh, this uh, magical this magical um, blade was forged by a. Apprentice, uh, apprentice, um, apprentice, uh, let's say, weapon smith. That's why it's called Smith's Magic Sword. Okay, I think by an apprentice. Weaponsmith. There we go. We have our first magic sword that we don't need to worry about being too powerful. Now I can add stuff to this, as I said. Yep. So <laughs> somebody was asking me a question about this, uh, and I was like, "Do I have a solution for this?" And I realised that I did. I had this is what I do quite a lot. Is I just I just don't add that much to it. Okay, uh, Michael. I made up a no, no. I think I've read that before. Um, I've never had to use any of the published settings. Well, that's fine. Um, I, I don't believe that uh, you need to use published settings. But it was listed as one of the perks of the Dwarven class. <laughs> Only perk. Okay, okay. That's what it, yes, I thought. Funny, didn't use the default setting of the game. The Dwarf, right. Magic gone. I'm not sure what this is all going on about. So I'm, I'm going to prompt you now. And we're going to make some magic stuff. Okay. Hashtag. Uh, give me your magic item ideas. And I will try to write them up as best I can. There we go. Let's see how you do. Um, remember, utility. I gave you a few suggestions before I when I showed you that document. I had a few that were sort of on the on the way to being turned into something. Um, and this is an opportunity to, to kind of do that again. Okay, so um, I will keep an eye on chat while I do this, and I'm going to go through some of the stuff that you've given me, and we'll see how we go. One of the good things about common magic items is that you don't usually have to worry about too many of them. <laughs> they're, they're usually all right. Okay, so the Sword of Glowing Soberity. So we, I think what we're dealing with here is it's glowing. Soberity, it's got a got a long name. Uh, we're going to put this down here. Its weapon, I don't know what it's. I don't honestly know how. What it, what is its rarity? It's going to be based off its um, its effect, isn't it? In some way, and that's that's the thing. Uh, okay, so. Uh, this sword, whoops, this sword glows dimly, glows dimly as it cleanses the attuned owner of, of alcohol, just, just let's put alcohol, of alcohol, of alcohol. No, let's let's get rid of the complicated bit. Let's just get rid of this bit. This is this this now becomes a common item. 
this magical sword glows dimly as it cleanses the the attuned owner of alcohol now so we want to put attunement on it which you probably should be doing uh, with a lot of magic items particularly if they are um, permanent and they're quite powerful so you've decided it's going to have attunement which is fine so we'll put we'll include attunement it's such a minuscule effect and it's just a magic sword it's not even plus one it's just a min minuscule effect so let's go requires attunement would I would, would I consider this something that needs to be uncommon in rarity? I think we can probably get away with it being a common magic item. <clears throat> are we really worried about it doing anything more? I don't know that we are. I think we will be fine. Life will go on. Okay? Your 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 day will not end badly. I think that's fine. So you let me know if you think the sword of glowing severity, the sword of severity, I think the I, severity, the sword of severity. Let's just go there. Glowing severity? Is it glowing severity? I don't know. <laughs> oh dear. Okay, so um, we'll come back to that. I'm going to put a highlight on that. I'm not sure if I want to make it the glowing sword of um, the, the sword of glowing severity. But we we have a basic magic item. It's super simple, super easy. We don't have to have anything more than that. I mean, it's nice if you can fill it out, but we don't need to worry about that. Um, a self-cleaning rag. God, we've got a magic item that's a self-cleaning rag. I think that's going to be entertaining. Um, well, let's let's do a self-cleaning rag. Self-cleaning rag. What an odd magic item to create. I can't believe I'm doing this. Uh, let's, it is going to be a wondrous item. It's not a weapon. And it's probably common rather than uncommon. And we just need to write up the rest of it in some way. <clears throat> Copy. Let's go there and move up. And paste. Okay. Wondrous item. It's common. Plenty of them. And we just need to write this in some way that's going to work. Bold. Dong, 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 dong. Dong, 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 dong. You're probably thinking to yourself, why the hell would I want a magic item like this? I think in many respects, people, I mean, look, there's players who just want stuff that does damage in your game. And then there's stuff, people who just want stuff that is kind of cool. Do you know what I mean? And sometimes people just like a laugh. Uh, so, okay. Um, while using this... Uh, white, let's make a white rag. White rag. Any stain can be cleaned from a surface. Surface. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. While using this white rag, any stain can be cleaned from a, from a surface. A objects from a, no, no, from, from, um, a, from, from, uh, a, Objects or from objects or environmental surface. 
Okay, next. Um, the rag always remains <laughs> um, perfectly clean. So what it's what it's doing is now. So for those of you who are wondering what the heck is going on here, this is prestidigitation. Like you can clean a service with prestidigitation. It's a cantrip, okay? It's one effect, and essentially somebody has turned it into a self-cleaning rag. So now we have a rag that basically does what um, prestidigitation, prestidigitation does, okay? Now you can clean the stain, but smell and other things may not come into place. So we've only taken a small portion of that, but also too, the rag always remains clean. So you, so you don't have to worry about, if you'll say, for example, if you're trying to clean off, and I think we, what we need to do is, if we try to clean off something like acid, let's include acid. Okay, the rag always remains perfectly clean and is indestructible. So let's include that as part of our. Uh, while using this white rag, any stain or substance can be cleaned from an object or environmental surface. So now, from a now, let's include a few more from a an object. Let's include creature, creature or environmental surface. This makes it far more interesting. So that means if you get sprayed with acid and it's burning through you and you need to wipe it off, you'd wipe them down with the self-cleaning rag. It's indestructible, it will remains perfectly clean, and it could essentially get rid of the substance, which is the, the acid. Stain or substance can be cleaned. So there we go. Uh, an odd item, but it has its purpose, has its place. And I'm sure the players will figure out how to use it in some way. Somewhere. Someone will use it. Uh, now. The glowing. I think there's a reason why he said the glowing. Sort of severity. So I'm going to just leave that. That's fine. Let's move on. Let's try a, another one, shall we? Let's try another. You guys gave me a bunch of ideas a little while ago. So I'm going to work my way through this and do as many as I can. Um, a drink of water, a lozenger. Okay, so the book of bad jokes would be an entertaining one. Now, let there be a breakfast skillet. Once a day provides bacon and eggs cooked to perfection for four medium-sized creatures. Self-cleaning too. Um, why not? Uh, let's include this. I think it's uh, bizarre. It reminds me of the, um, the there's, a, there's a, a story about a pudding. Uh, I think it's an Australian story, and I can't remember the name of it, but I, I used to like it a lot. So, skillet of breakfast. Let's call it the breakfast skillet. Breakfast skillet. Something like that. Is it the breakfast skillet? Uh, can it be called something else? A self-cleaning rag. I, th I feel like it needs to have something else. The, the cooked, <laughs> cooked breakfast skillet. Breakfast skillet of cooking. <laughs> this is this is a little odd. Um, I don't know if that's what you wanted to call it. So I'm just. I'm just making some adjustments. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. Pale Rider. The Magic Pudding. That's right. The Magic Pudding. That's the one. Thank you very much. The Magic Pudding. Um, and I don't know if there's a, there is a, did we, did we ever do that? The Magic Pudding. We might come back to that. We'll see how we do. Okay, so uh, I need to do this in such a way. So this, this. Okay, uh, this 
magical skillet. Can make breakfast from nothing once per day. Once per day. Per day. Uh, so what are we doing here? This is just this is. <laughs> I've got to get it. I've got to get this right. Self cleaning. You've got self cleaning in there as well. Ah uh, uh, dear. I'm just going to drink some water and give me a second. So how do I how do I word this? Magical skill can make breakfast uh, breakfast from nothing once per day. The uh, breakfast uh, conjured is real and provides bacon and eggs. Uh, is real, real, providing bacon and egg, uh, providing cooked. Cooked to perfection. Bacon and eggs for four medium creatures. And I'm making that six. Six medium creatures. There we go. The Magical skillet is also self-cleaning. There we go. <clears throat> self-cleaning, self-cleaning. Okay, there we go. Okay, I think I got it right. Osiris, hello, Osiris. Well, uh, we're making magic items, and uh, I, I, ha I have explained how to make magic items, and I, I have also explained to people we're actually making some very odd magic items right now. We've done a self-cleaning rag and a breakfast skillet of cooking, sort of glowing severity. But um, <clears throat> I also showed them basically the weapon that I create or the sword that I create. It's basically magical, has no other benefits, and it's... It's just a common item, a common magical item, and there's no attunement to the sword as 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 you would expect. Like I don't worry about attunement, uh, not for that kind of sword. If I want it to grow and develop, I might. So this is another thing you can do with magic weapons: is you can start off with a a really common magic sword, does nothing other than it's just magical, no pluses or anything like that. And then later on require attunement over time to start be getting the better aspects of that magic sword. Um, you know, as, as if the sword is deciding that it likes the owner, its current, you know, current owner. Pendant of the spell book, open the pendant, displays a holographic image of, of your spell book. Pendant of the spell book. Interesting. Uh, let me just do this, because I believe this was an item that you put down here. In the chat, and so let's see if I can turn it into something. Oh, how about a rod which can be set to cast prestidigitation at regular intervals, no attunement? Um, I would say yes. Yes, that could definitely be done. Absolutely. No problems. So let's include this as a... Now I think we're, what we're doing is we're creating a holographic image of your spell book from a pendant. So you don't have to have a spell book. There, that sort of doesn't run the risk of getting destroyed or burnt or anything like that. I don't think it needs... This is a wondrous common magic item. Pendant of the spell book. Bum bum bum. Come on. 
Okay. Um, let's let's see how how can I how can I word this? Um, I'm just give me a second. I'm going to use the, some of the wording that you've got there. I just want to make sure I get this roughly in the right ballpark for this so that it works. Um, what do we we don't want to do too much with it we want to make it nice and nice and simple and we also want to make sure that there's there's nothing that can be done with it that would be overpowered because we want to keep it within that power range um, and that's it nothing else a pendant is just an amulet really Okay, so, okay, here we go. Uh, while uh, wearing this, do we do we really feel that attunement is required for this? I don't know that there necessarily needs to be attunement for this magic item. Uh, while wearing this pendant, pendant, uh, pendant, it can be used to replace a spell book. Okay, there we go. That's what we were trying to say here. Do I need a lozenger? Yes, I do. I'm going to definitely need a lozenger. Um, now, opening, opening the pendant displays a holographic image of your spell book. Um, opening them. <laughs> Pin it, I suppose, a holographic image of your spell book. Uh, uh, you did. Um, with all the spells, with all the spells. Uh, written, written from your original spell book. The pendant of the spell book functions functions the same way as a real spell book. Did I write too much? I may have. Uh, I think that was Fred Hooper's idea, I can't remember. Yeah, it's too minor for attunement, which is why I'm not saying attunement. Pendant of a spell book. I think that's fine. Okay, next. We've got a few things here to work with. I'm going to do a bit of a copy paste and grab your idea because. Uh, sometimes it's easier if I do that rather than doing the other thing. Something like that. Something like this, something like this. There we go. Okay. I'm going to work my way through this list of items and try to turn them into magic items. Uh, let's get rid of this. Okay. So we need a name for this. What is this item going to be called? Okay, we need a name. We don't have a name, Osiris, so, you know. Uh, it's got an effect, yes. It's probably a wondrous common magic item because it's a cantrip effect, so it's not that powerful. We don't need to worry about getting too carried away. Um, it's not a, it's, is it a wondrous item? It's a rod. 
Rods sort of, are they listed as rods? I think rods are just listed as rods. Rod common. It would be listed as a common rod. Rod common. Uh, common, rod, uncommon, common. The effect is pretty minor. I don't think we need to have attunement for this one. Okay. Oh, I have a, um, a good one. A book where you can cast something. Contact other planes, putting the knowledge acquired into the... All right. Hmm. Contact other planes, putting the knowledge acquired into the, the book. Infinite space instead of the book, and it turns to what the, the reader is looking for. So you, you basically, it's like a huge notebook. <laughs> You've created a huge notebook of some kind. Correct? That sounds like what you've done there. <laughs> All right, so let's go up and let's pick another one here. Now we have the mini parachute. I'm going to do the, the pen sword. Now the reason I'm going to do the pen sword is because we already have one there, right? Essentially from Percy Jackson, the, the movie, the pen sword. And we don't want to do anything huge with it because, again, we don't need to. And I can still make this a common magic weapon. Seriously? Common magic weapon. And it's just got a tiny effect. This is why I, I, I knew that I needed to make sure I, I did something that was a low end on this. So call it the pen sword. It is magical. And um, we're going to take pretty much all of this here. Copy and paste it. Make a few adjustments and it's ready to go. It's a weapon. It's common. The great thing is you can hide it. This. Now, uh, where's the, what's, what's what I want to do here? Um. Uh, this magical pen looks like a looks like any normal writing tool, but can transform. into a magical sword. Uh, transform into a sword. Uh, uh, a sword. The sword is magical and has no other benefits. That's it. But the great thing is, you can take it into a place where you're not allowed to take weapons, and nobody would be the wiser about it. Unless, of course, they have some sort of magic item screening um, system, like a, you know, um, uh, a metal detector. You know, where you know if you walk through, beep, 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 magic item on person, hand out what it is go through the scanner again, beep, beep, beep. So unless they've got that sort of thing going on, you can now hide it away. And it's easy to sort of, you know, easy to pull out of a pocket or a pouch or wherever you need to get it from. So, um, and that's, that is, a, that all that is is <laughs> Percy Jackson's sword pen. Pen sword. Do we want to call it the sword pen or the pen sword? Which is the best name? The sword pen or the pen sword? It's got to be one or the other, right? One of those. Um, cursed Cape. Hello, S Style uh, I'm Shy X. How are you doing? I will add Cursed Cape to my list of things. The Cursed Cape. 
Hurst Keep. Okay, cool. Uh, let me see, where was I? I was, um, we were deciding, here's my question to you. I'm going to, I'm going to ask you, Kirsten, what matter? Exactly. I all I've got is Cursed Cape. I don't know what to do with it. So I'm, I'm, I've put it on the list, but I don't know what to do with it. I'll come back to it. Is it going to be called the pen sword or the sword pen? I mean, these are vital questions that need to be answered. And since there's 11 of you here, I'm going to get you to answer that question while I go and take a toilet break. But <laughs> that, I think that's my plan. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, oh, come on. Man, YouTube is such a pain sometimes with the chat, the way that it displays it. I'm, I'm, I know they're trying to get um, more stuff in, but you're winding down. It's all right. It's all right. We're just uh, we're just gonna just I'm gonna just make magic items in the stream for a little while anyway. So if it uh, it winds up being you know the thing I make or don't make, it, it's all right. We'll, we'll come back to them eventually. It's always a matter of it's always a matter of taste, right? So let's here we go. Let's do this. Have you made your own homebrew magic item for your games? Let's end this poll. I'm gonna start a new poll. Um, oh, the self-cleaning litter familiar box. I think we've got a lot of self-cleaning stuff going on here. We can do something different. <laughs> so we got, have you made your own homebrew magic items before in your games? Yes, 83%. No, 16%. Incomplete, just watching. Um, incomplete and just watching. There's nothing there. So it's just no, 16%. Okay, interesting. Wonderful. Let's see. Let me do this. Should the magic sword be called the called called what? Should the pen, should the pen that transforms into a magic sword be called what? And that's, so it's going to be the, oh, come on, pen, sword, the sword pen, uh, the, um, I don't know, pen weapon, pen weapon, what else, um, The, I don't know, uh, I don't know, transforming pin? I don't know. I don't know. Something, I mean, you guys can come up with something else. So like, I'm going to put this poll up, and you guys let me know what you like. And, uh, yeah. Name that magic item. Hashtag. Name the pin that trans forms into a sword. The pencil. Oh, you are. Oh, I wasn't expecting that one. Okay, give me five minutes or less. I'll be back. I need to take a quick toilet break.
Okay, back we come. Let's see what you guys have cooked up. I'm sure you've cooked up something interesting. The pencil. Ay, ay, ay. I should have guessed. <laughs> Is that the best name? Let's see, let's see what this poll says before we get back into this. Um, I always, it's always billowing, sometimes as if in a strong wind, subject to strong winds. Oh, I see. The problem is, it's, it's kind of too much like the, the cloak of billowing already. Um, sometimes as if it isn't a strong wind, subject to you two, you two strong winds. Oh, I see. So it, it's not just, it doesn't just billow, but there's also, it also creates wind. I see what you're doing to do, Shy X. Now I understand. It took me a little while. I didn't quite get it. But I think I now I know. Um, the cursed cape. I feel like it's 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 going to be called something else though. It's like, mm, is that what it's actually called, or is it something else? <laughs> um, you're working on a warlock stuff, specifically rings, robes, and staff packed boons. Any ideas for? Their baseline effect while we are waiting well we'll see we'll see one of the things you'll notice when i'm doing these magic items is i haven't done any 5e mechanics there's no mention of attacks wisdom perception checks disadvantage advantage dice rolls or anything like that and i that's quite deliberate in my part uh let's have a look and see what you have voted for the pen sword, sword pen, the pen sword. The pen sword is overwhelming out of six votes. This is the this is the name. This is going to be the way. The pen sword it is. <laughs> okay, let's uh, let's go back to the uh, the chat and um, and get uh, and get moving back into this because I only got so much time before I got to go to work. So. So we've got the pen sword. Do I have it? The pen sword. The pen sword was the one that was the overwhelming winner. So we've got that one down. All right, let's pick another thing from here. Somebody was saying about rods, something about rods and rings and so forth. So we'll see if there's... Ah, oh, I have magic pudding anyway. Ah, oh, magic pudding is there. Oh, that's on my list already to do at some point. Um, divining rod. The divining rod. We could do the divining rod. Why not? What would the divining rod do, though? If it was a divining rod, what would it do? That's the question. Um, Peeves extra dimensional Lou. Ah, <laughs> uh, dear. A ball of endless string. Uh, the Golden Snitch is a pretty easy one. The Everlasting Flower. Um, the Auto Writing Quill. Or the Quill of Writing. I think we could call it the, um, the Quill of Writing. Umbrella of Descent. <laughs> um, I'm going to just pick one of these things. Let's, let's just do the Ball of Endless String. The reason I've picked the, the Ball of Endless String is primarily because I just like mundane things, really small things that have effects. And uh, how will my players figure out how to make make this useful? <laughs> Sometimes that's asking a bit much, but um, I think it's still fun. Ball, ball of Endless String. It's probably going to be a wondrous common item. Um... Let's let's go wondrous common, and go copy and drop that in here. Paste ball of endless string and bold. Okay, this um, this apple sized ball of string. 
string is magical this apple sized I think that's right apple sized what I also want to do is I want to include another factor which is the fact that you can't break the string this apple sized ball of string is magical and what's the best way to write this though that's the question Oh, um, I don't think there's an item like that already. True seeing, strong winds. Uh, okay, so this apple sized ball of string is magical and has no limit to. How much string can be unwound? Unwound. The magical string can't be cut, broken, or destroyed because now the benefit for that is if you're using the string and it's unlimited that's great but there's always that that hassle where you're using the string to, to make sure you can go get back to where you came from and so they do a labyrinth when the game master does the labyrinth thing on you and suddenly you know they cut the string they change the, the, the you know they, they, they change the position of the um paving stones, the, any markings that you've put there suddenly vanish. Uh, so we, we've kind of eliminated that as a problem for you, if that were to come up. Keep the string away from cats. <laughs> nice. Very good. Very good. Uh, true. You can keep the string away from cats. I mean, what's the issue? If the, if the cat wants the string, the cat wants the string. It's not a problem. Uh, now, what else have you got here? Maybe there's some um, effects. The immediate area around you triggers off. Uh, okay. It's like the it's like the cloak of billowing. Uh, I was just about to cut a piece. Uh, now I'm going to work on another one. Okay, but I, <laughs> this is just an example. I'm trying to just give you an example of how to make really small, simple effects that can have some sort of impact on your game that your players will can have fun with really that's really the, the gist of it i've never been hugely fond of magic items because usually it's oh it's a um oh the divining rod could be it's not a bad idea divining rod could be true sight detect magic and other stuff it's not not a dumb idea at all that's uh, that's pretty good actually not bad at all um let's see we might even we might even do we might even build that one uh what else did you have here a pair of ball um pair the ball of beanless string with unseen servant to make it keep unwinding and then wind and then wind the string to sell more of it uh passive income well no it's not going to work because you can't cut it i've made that deliberately because the problem if you cut it then you could have two balls of endless string and this is another thing this is one of the reasons why i said you couldn't destroy it cut it or break it because i know what players would do is like oh i i, I want a ball of endless string we'll just cut it and now we have two balls of endless string it is the first thing that i would have thought of doing as a player so yeah not gonna do that rope of packed boon uh let's just have a look here Shy X is sharing some ideas. Let's have a look at what you've got here. Uh, I wonder if we can actually do anything with that. Okay, so let's have a look. Robe of Pact Boon. Uh, gifted a robe that you can conjure to donor or do um, 
um, Don, Doff, and a single action. Why would you need to use a Don or Doff as a single action? Do if you have if you've a magic armor, you can make that your packed robe over one hour, which can be done over a short rest. I don't know what to do with this, uh, honestly. I mean, you know, if you can figure out what to do with it, that's great. I don't know what I would do with it, Shy X. I'm just not quite getting getting a, a, an idea of what I would, how I would, how I would shape that myself. The divining rod is a little bit different, um, and the divining rod is quite powerful too. Uh, you, we, if we need give somebody a divining rod and it can now use. I mean, I think it should not have charges. I think it should be able to use detect magic can detect magic and have true sight indefinitely. I don't think it should run out or anything like that. But then how powerful are we dealing with for an item like that? That is, I think, the biggest issue for this one here is power level. Because I'm not sure what I should set the power level at for something like that. I'm not entirely sure. I have to think about it a little bit more. Um, staff, Pact Boon, gift a staff, you have bestowed a melee weapon property to it. Okay, well that's interesting. Okay, look, I'm, I'm going to leave those for now, I'm going to come back and see if I can pick another one of these very small, simple ideas. How can we include it into our game that might have some fun or odd um, effect. Let us do the Everlasting Flower. Everlasting flower. Let's do that one, just because it is it is it is such a. I mean, how the heck and in, in any way could it possibly have any use to you whatsoever? So this is primarily the reason why I've selected it. So, everlasting flower, and we're going to make it a wondrous item. I'm going to make it a common wondrous item. Copy. Put that there. Paste. Uh, paste. Everlasting flower. Bold. Wondrous item common. This. Magical flower. Um, now we want to actually give it a bit of a, a description I think ring of the fisherman oh my you guys have got some interesting ideas there simple effect I'm gonna have to mark down some of this stuff I need to make a, um, a marking point so I know where to come back to okay Don Doffer using it takes more than yeah yeah are you you're thinking in terms of armor I see where you're going with that this now, what are we doing with an everlasting flower? This magical flower never dies and and always smells sweet. Sweet. Try sweet. Sweet. I think that's the right sweet. Not sweet, but sweet. <laughs> okay, okay. Alright, so but why would you, what magical effect do we have on it that we really want to, now, this magical ro rainbow, let's get a, um, uh, rainbow colored, no, that's not rainbow colored, colored flower, never dies and always smells sweet. What else? would a very simple thing like this be able to do? I feel like the Everlasting Flower is a, um, a rip-off of um, Tangled. Well, didn't they have a flower that made you young all the time? So as long as you... 
as long as you sung a song, you 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 would imbue the power of the flower, and it would keep you young. Um, is there's no real magic? I mean, geez, the, the, this is a this is a big problem. Like, what would you consider the power level of this? Because aging in Dungeons and Dragons um, 5e compared to older versions is not as impactful. Getting older in 5e means nothing, but older versions like AD and D and uh, even in 3.5, you know, aging was a bad thing. Aging could put you out of the game. You know, you could wind up getting too old and you just couldn't do anything. So. But maybe that's what that's what we do. Um, uh, singing, singing a happy song, um, imbues the creature holding it with everlasting youth so you don't grow old in the use but would it be common it would probably not be common it doesn't have recharge on it um, you could get rid of some of the effects and older D&D from it that would be quite significant Smelling the flower removes one exhaustion, but exhaustion is a concept in Fiverr. You know how I feel about putting magic items together that have a um, mechanic around Fiverr. Uh, I just won't do it. Um, mo mostly the reason being that I just don't see that's useful if people aren't playing Fiverr. If you're playing Fiverr, you can do that. That's easy. But if you're not playing Fiverr and you're trying to run a game... I, would, I mean, I know there's a lot of people on my channel who follow 5e, but there's a lot of people who follow Basic, Beck Me, and AD&D. &D. I mean, Fred Hubert, I know that you follow AD&D. &D. You are probably the only person I can think of that can answer this question, Fred Huber, because I know you play Advanced Dungeons & Dragons. How powerful is the Everlasting Flower as written currently? If you were to place it into your game, where aging is a problem, where would the, where would the scarcity, um, scarcity, you know, how, how scarce would you consider this? Is this a common magic item, a uncommon magic item? Um, is it a rare, rare item? Like, you know, where, where does it sit for you? I would be curious to know. Very, very curious to know. Because right now in 5e, it would be considered a common magic item. But... And another game, I suppose too, to a to large extent, I mean, even in 5e, there might be some things that can aid you and cause problems. Is there a lot? There's, oh, it's, this, is, this is one of the issues. This is one of the issues when you try to do something that's system agnostic and you're trying to design for system agnostic so that anybody can use it, it can get a little tricky. And this is where I'm, I'm rolling into that problem. Again, I knew I would. Um, but I still, I still don't, um, I don't, I don't regret the idea of working that way. Anyway, I'm going to think about that a little bit more. I'm going to go into the chat and pull out some of your ideas and see if there's anything I want to work with. Uh, and see if you can, uh, see if somebody has answered that question, everlasting flower. What power level do you think that is? Hmm. Tricky question. Tricky question. Anyway, let's have a look. What have you got here for me to check out? It's the Robe Packed Boon. Uh, and then, oh, the, 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 the fight, there's a fight going on between the pen sword and the sword pen. Oh, well, we'll see how that works out. Uh, next. Shy X has got the staff packed boon, gifted a staff you can bestow one melee weapon property to it. Okay, so that's it's a little odd. I th I th I'm not entirely sure what you're trying to do there. 
It's been a while since I played a, wo um, a warlock, by the way, so packs and so forth like that. And I've, I've been avoiding the, the design factor around that too. The ring packed boon. Uh, gifting a ring, you can store one spell you know in it and cast it once per short rest. Okay, it's basically a spell of storing. A spell, it's, it's, a, it's a spell storing sp ring. Like you get a ring that you can store a spell in. So this is a very common thing. It doesn't isn't there something that already like that? And every version of D and D, I think every version of D and D has something like this. Uh, Shy X is trying to help though. I see. Um, oh, I got one. A, a statue of a cat which can be used to summon an invisible ghost cat. Probably won't do what you say, but can be used to mess with someone. Simple effect. Okay. All right, let's um, let's mark that down. We'll see what the, where we go with this. I don't know where we go with this. But we'll, you never know. You never know these things. Uh, <clears throat> what else have you got here? The Ring of the Fisherman, Fred Huber, creates a rod and reel and automatically casts to nearest edible fish. You have, you have ten minutes to land um, to land the fish. Then the fishing tackle vanishes. Oh, I see. That is that is an odd magic item. Very curious. I can think of another way we could approach it, rather than structuring it that way. Because you could have a, a fishing reel, ring of the fisherman. Could also you could have a rod of the fisherman, and it's basically it guarantees that you catch a fish, which would be kind of nice. Do you know what I mean? And it would be nice if you can just def definitely catch a fish. I'm going to go fishing. I've got my rod. I spent my money. I thought it was going to be useful because Fred said uh, on one of his videos, "Ah, oh, you know, you should definitely have you know a, a rod so you can catch fish." And then I went fishing, and I couldn't catch the fish because I rolled a one when I tried to catch a fish. I don't have to roll the one anymore because my magic item allows me to just catch my fish. Oh, okay. Uh, so <laughs> I suppose you could work it that way. Ah, here we go. Shy X, Everlasting Flower, never dies or wilts. Okay, except for pulling all of its off, pulling all, all of its petals off. Which are determined by D20. Um, I like the idea of the wilts thing. I think the wilts thing is fine. Let's let's get all wilts. If I, it never dies. All wilts, and always smells sweet. Okay, um, I do like the idea that you could destroy it though. I think there's there's something to be said for that. Maybe the everlasting flower can keep the the rest of the garden. It's planted and fresh, and all such flowers as flowers act as if watered and perfectly cared for. Oh, sorry, I, I think that's a very clever idea. I think that idea that you've put down there is um, quite brilliant. I don't know that I would say it's the everlasting flower though. I feel like it's it's a it's a different magic item that you've just described. Uh, it's a it's a plant. It's obviously, I mean, I feel like it's a plant that's doing something fairly significant. Smell the flower for 10 minutes, removes one exhaustion. I'm just grabbing a few ideas and sort of letting them float around a bit and see how I feel about things. Um, oh, the whistle is back. I can hear the whistler. Uh, any common magic items always I item is always welcome in my game. Artificer. <laughs> okay, all right. All right, I see where you're going with that. Well, common magic items are supposed to be for character levels well level one. I mean when you're making these things for 5e, it's it's sort of spelled out. If you're dealing with a different system, it's gonna be more difficult. Um Oh, the horse pocket. A pouch which can teleport your horse into into it where it will remain in suspended animation until you take it out. 
Oh, the horse pocket. I like the horse pocket. I think that's quite clever. The horse pocket's um, a clever idea. This is to stop it from getting fireballed, right? I can't count the number of times my, my horse has been fireballed as we were ambushed <laughs> walking down the road. Everlasting youth would would be very powerful in early versions, as I know. Unique legendary artifacts. It would be valuable to hags. It certainly will. Nearest edible fish. Does Fugu count? <laughs> Fuju. <laughs> uh, Ring of the Fisherman has no range, and you might be uh, might not be able to reel the fish in most pointly. Okay, interesting. Interesting way to go. Uh, Viva la Dirt League. I don't know what that reference is to, but um, yeah, you 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 definitely and <laughs> you definitely had me interested. So, what would be the power level? You've said here legendary. You said hello, derp. Ring of invisibility. Well worn the ring. Um, well worn the ring, but not the wearer is invisible. Well, well worn the ring. Well worn the ring, but not the wearer is invisible. I have no. You've you've lost me, derp. Ring invis of invisibility. That is very confusing, Derp. I have no idea what I'm supposed to do with that. Very, very confusing. Um, <laughs> oh, oh, that's right. It's that uh, they, they they do the they, they mock tabletop role playing games in D and D, don't they? Yes, I think I understand. I think I know. Yeah, I remember the channel. I haven't watched a lot of it, but I, I do. I'm aware. Of, I'm aware of it, but I don't watch a lot of it. Uh, okay. So let's let's establish that this is a it's not common. Let's make it a legendary. Legend I mean fine. Legendary's legendary. We've got to have some legendary stuff, right? And um, that kind of falls into that, that bracket. Legendary. Legendary. And it probably is a legendary magic item when you think about it. Okay, right, so let's, um, I'm not sure what to do with these here. I'm going to go back up here, see if I can pick something else out of this list here that you guys have created a while back. The Umbrella of Descent feels like a, an interesting idea. Um, Self-writing map. This is to stop people having to worry about having to map while they're playing their games, right? I know why that's there. Um, the Jug of Booze Transformation. The Book of Bad Jokes. Peeves, extra dimensional Lou. <laughs> I think we'd let's do the umbrella of descent. The mini parachute is funny, but let's do the umbrella of descent. It's very Mary Poppins. Obviously. So if we go here and paste Umbrella of Descent. It is a wondrous item. It's it's really featherful, and featherful is what level spell? It's not a high level spell, really. Um, gauntlets of infinite thirst. You understand the? I I, I you've lost me. I I am still trying to figure it out myself. So. <laughs> So if we're making something like an umbrella of descent, this is basically featherful. But it's featherful for one individual. Correct? That's what we're really essentially doing. Which means, if we're doing this, we can mark that after we've written it. So let's go down and... Um, I find the featherfall spell in 5e it's pretty I mean 
Featherfall spell in 5e is... A lot of these spells are actually really similar to the older ones. Um, okay, when you... Um, unfold, unfold this magical umbrella. <laughs> umbrella. Uh, when you unfold this magical umbrella, um, you stop falling. And um, descend slowly slowly to the ground. Taking no damage. So essentially it stops you from killing yourself and we've descent descent when you unfold this magical umbrella you stop falling and descend slow to the ground taking no damage okay so feather fall is a first level spell so we just need to determine what and it's only i mean two, also two feather fall usually affects more than one creature we're only affecting one creature it's only going to be useful for you and nobody else if we're doing the mary poppins thing and uh what's the other thing that we probably need to take into consideration um This is this is why I don't I do not like making I feel like this is this is where making magic items in a live stream can be tricky. Because all of the information that you might need to guide you is either in a different book or it's scattered all over the place. Making it incredibly difficult to figure out what you're doing. And then writing it in such a way that it still can be used anywhere. Again, really difficult. Um, here we go. So it'll be under the workshop, won't it? Not that one, not that one, not that one, not that one. Uh, no, here we go. So we've got that one, that's that bit. And there's a section on doing other stuff. Like buildings, bits. Um, creating magic items, here we go. So first level spell would be considered common so i think i thought it was going to be common anyway but yeah so an umbrella of descent would be a common magic item for those of you who are sitting here and wondering why is fred just making lots and lots of common magic items because i want to show you that you don't need to go and make really powerful magic items that actually sometimes the best avenue is to make very simple magic items Yep, you remember how I was saying start small, start low powered and start with utility? This is utility. <laughs> this is exactly what I was talking about before. So the Umbrella of Descent, we have now got an Umbrella of Descent. I have not attached the fact that unfolding is an action or a bonus action or any sort of garbage like that, because who gives a shit? I haven't stipulated um, the, the, the rate of falling. I've just said that you descend slowly to the ground and take no damage. That's it. That's all there needs to be. Nothing else. And that's a nice simple line. It's easy to understand. Okay. Easy to port over to any game too. Uh, without having too much confusion from a game master. Uh, okay. Hides the, um, the ring, but not the wearer. I see. I see what you've done with it. Uh, derp. Now I understand. It hides the ring, but not the wearer. What an odd thing. To, that would. That's very much, yeah. That's taken the piss in many, many ways. Uh, <laughs> what else have you got here before I have to finish up? The Goblet of Infinite Thirst. 
The more the user drinks from it, the thirstier they become. This is definitely a cursed item. Um, it is definitely going to cause a whole bunch of problems. But it's funny. It rem it's, it is, it's a bit like uh, the, the, uh, the shell that you drink in Harry Potter... Uh, was it Dumbledore has to drink from the shell, from this liquid, and he's constantly feeling thirsty, uh, but not really for the stuff that he's drinking, which is kind of interesting. First project. Yeah, maybe it was. Scroll of Debatable Knowledge provides information on any topic, but the facts are always dubious or controversial, leading to arguments. Oh, my God. That is, that is, <laughs> that is pretty funny. That's pretty funny. I'm just I'm just cutting and pasting right now, people. Or the evil brill or descent makes you fall twice as fast. Take double damage. You guys have got gone gone a bit twisted, haven't you? You guys want to make cursed magic items. This is because I've said that I've I make most of my homebrew magic items are you know ninety five percent of the time they're cursed in some way. Come on, you can have stuff that isn't completely obnoxious. I'm quite capable of making them. Coin of the Shambling. What have you got here, Coin of the Shambling? I'm kind of interested to see what you said here. Um, it would be placed in a teleport circle, and anyone who attempts to teleport there would be transported miles away, small chance of being put on another plane. Wow. Now, you've said something about the endless ball of string not being cut being a problem. The endless ball on ball of string that can't be cut is a problem. Why now explain to me, Fred Hooper, why that would be a problem. What what would players do that would undermine your game if it could not be cut? I am curious. I'm curious what you have come up with as an explanation as to why that might be specifically an issue that I have not taken into consideration. Because I'm pretty sure it sh it would be it would be fine. But if you have an ex a reason rationale, I'm certainly willing to hear what it is. So what have we done today? We have made the umbrella of a descent, the everlasting flower, the ball of endless string. So that's three. Uh, the pendant of spell of the spell book. That's four. The breakfast skillet of cooking was the five. The self cleaning rag, six. The Sword of Glowing Sobriety, sobriety. I, th I feel like so, um, the Sword of Sobriety is probably fine, but that's seven. The Pen Sword, which is eight, and nine is the Smith's Magic Sword. And we have a couple of swords here, primarily because I wanted to demonstrate you can make magic swords and have them common and have them have do nothing other than just being magical or hide their current form. Um... So there's something else I could do here, but I'm not going to have time because I'm going to have to go to work. But yeah, very, very interesting. Okay, uh, could jam up a door or form an armor in a big uh, big enough amount? Oh, you can wind the string around yourself. If somebody was stupid enough to wind string around themselves to create a indestructible armor, I, I would be amused. Can I just say that there's a problem? The string would not be destroyed, and if they did that, I think that would be great. Would that mean that what's inside the string would not get damaged? No. Because just because you're wearing armor that can't be damaged doesn't mean that whatever meat is inside the armor is not going to be banged around and hurt. Uh, you, people are assuming that, um, you know, that they're not going to find a gap between the string. Like, that can be done. But also, too, that uh, you, you, you won't get bruised on the inside. You, you can definitely get bruised on the inside. Just because you're in a tin can, you shake up a tin can, you put a person inside it, they're going to they're gonna get hurt pretty badly. Uh, oops. Sorry about that, people. Um, you got the... It, it's sort of like the, the matrix effect. Within the matrix. Within the matrix. Within the matrix. Within the matrix. Uh, string that can't be cut as a power um, level like the immovable rod. Okay, so what is the what is the power level of the immovable rod? You could have endless string um, ball of string 
knitted into a chain of invul uh, knitted into a chain of invulnerability. Knitted into a chain of invulnerability. No slashing or piercing damage would work. Again, I, I think you misunderstand how armor works. Fred Huber, you should know this. Just because you have armor that can't be penetrated by a slashing damage does not mean you will not get bruised. I know this from experience. <laughs> you can certainly get injured. But I can understand your th thoughts being it's kind of like the immovable rod. Um, and maybe we, we increase it to roughly somewhere. The endless unbreakable string is a climbing rope of an infinite length. Yes, you could try climbing, yeah, but climbing a piece of string is not like climbing a piece of rope. It's actually really hard to climb up a piece of string. Do you know what I mean? I just don't think that's gonna, <laughs> I don't think it's gonna work quite the way that people expect. I think they're gonna wind up trying to um, stretch it too far and it won't work. Climbing string is not climbing rope. Um, the immovable rod. Where is the immovable? Immovable. Immovable. Immovable rod is uncommon. So even the immovable rod is uncommon. But I mean, yes. Okay. So let's let's say even if we're dealing with something like that, I th I still think it's I still it's, still think it's going to be fine. Um. Trial and test, trial and test. There's always a chance of making a mistake, and uh, maybe I've made a mistake today. But honestly, if even if you rolled it and rolled it around you and turn, try to turn it into armor, I, I wouldn't consider that good enough to stop getting bruised on the inside. Um, you are still just a, a um, squishy, squishy thing inside. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know that it's going to work quite the way people expect. Uh, anyway, so let's just go and end this poll. I think we have established that the the pen sword is the name of that magic item. Stretch the string across a um, river and it stops all ships. Oh, I see. It doesn't break and it doesn't, but does that mean that the, the string, you still got to tie the string off and secure it at, at either end. I just don't think it's going to be a problem. <laughs> I honestly don't think it is. Controversies. Oh, well, I suppose you could, I mean, yeah. I think it'll be fine. I think it'll be all right. You're talking about that the ball of endless string will cause arguments between players and dungeon masters and game masters, correct? Now, I, I would say that could possibly happen, but that's always been the case with every magic item I can think of. There's always been the potential for that to, to, to happen. Anyway, I'm going to get moving out of here. Thank you for, uh, look, thank you for everybody who's been watching and listening and taking part. I really do want to appreci um, appreciate people taking part in the polls. I put up two polls today. So if you took part in the first poll and the second poll, great. If you just took part in one of the polls, that's good too. I want to thank all of my patrons who support me on Patreon. Without you, it's just not possible to do this sort of thing. And uh, I really do appreciate your uh, your input. But I really want to thank those of you in the chat, okay? Shy X, Osiris, Fred Huber, Derp. Um, I think there was a couple of other people here as well who were putting in their two cents. I believe Pale Rider was here at one point. And if there's somebody else that I have missed, <laughs> Sh Shiner81, uh, almost forgot about Shiner81. But no, no, I got shown 81. That's good. That's good. <laughs> Michael Freyker. I forgot about Michael Freyker. And yeah, if I missed your name, was not my intention. Oh, PB as well. PB as well. So thank you, everybody who's in the chat, sharing your ideas and your perspectives and your uh, and your uh, your assessment and analysis of some of the stuff that's been made today. Wherever you are in the world, whether it be the morning, the afternoon, or the night, please look after yourself, your family, and your friends. Be nice to your neighbours. And I'll be back tomorrow doing character building, hopefully. But till next time, keep rolling those 20s.